Back in the old days, Mark Tardif was just 19, but he put a mark on his name in the eyes of the hockey world. Mark won the 1969 Memorial Cup on the Montreal Junior Canadiens, playing with future NHL stars like Jean Houle and Gilbert Perrault. Mark Tardif had 72 points in 51 games, and he made it to the 1968-69 OHA All-Star team. But that was just the start of Tardif's hockey journey. In the WHA, Tardif not only won two MVP awards, but he also won a championship. And he became the second player in WHA history to score 70 goals in a single season. Transitioning into the NHL, Tardif had even greater success as he won the Stanley Cup twice. Mark Tardif ultimately became the all-time leading goal scorer in WHA history with 316 goals and he was later recognized as an NHL All-Star. However, a dark moment cast a shadow on his career in 1976 when a brutal and senseless attack almost derailed his whole career. Mark Tardif became a star when he played for the Junior Canadiens. The 68-69 team is widely considered to be one of the best junior hockey teams in Canadian history. Winning the Memorial Cup was a huge deal back then, and it greatly elevated Tardif's draft ranking. In 1969, the Montreal Canadiens picked Tardif as their second overall pick, using a special rule that allowed them to choose two French Canadian players before any other team. Tardif started the 1969-70 season playing for the Montreal Voyageurs in the AHL. He did really well, scoring 58 points in just 45 games. Because of this, he got the chance to play for the Montreal Canadiens in February of 1970. But getting playing time for Tardif wasn't really easy because the Montreal Canadiens were stacked. They had a lineup full of future Hall of Famers like Jean Beliveau, Frank Mahovlich, Henri Richard, Jacques Lemaire, and Ivan Cronoye. Still, Harder found his way onto the ice regularly. For the next three seasons, he scored 19, 25, and 31 goals, usually from the third line. The skilled left winger also became known as a tough guy. He wasn't afraid to fight as seen in the 1970-71 season where he had 133 penalty minutes. That's like NHL 24 numbers. Tardif won two Stanley Cups. One in 1971 and the other in 1973. Though he often had disagreements with the legendary coach Scotty Bowman. Scotty constantly questioned Tardif's commitment to defensive play. In 1973, the WHA Los Angeles Sharks gave Tardif a tempting offer, a three-year contract with $250,000. Tardif had been earning $40,000 with the Canadians, and they tried to keep him by offering another $80,000, but it was only for a year. Tardif saw the opportunity with the Sharks as a big one, and because of the conflict with Scotty Bowman, he decided to accept it and become a new key player for the team. Unfortunately, Tardif's performance with the Sharks was just lackluster. The team also struggled with poor facilities and he had very little fan support. Tardif didn't score in his first 10 games with the Sharks, but somehow, by the end of this disappointing 1973-74 season, Tardif managed to accumulate 70 points, including 40 goals. In April of 1974, the struggling LA team had to relocate to Michigan, becoming the Michigan Stags. Unfortunately, these financial troubles just kept continuing, and in January, they had to trade Tardif. His significant WHA contract went to the Quebec Nordiques. Once back in his home province and reunited with his best friend, Jean Hull, Mark Tardif thrived on a line alongside Serge Bonnier and the emerging star, Real Cluche. Tardif quickly found success, scoring a mere 38 goals in just 53 games, totaling 50 goals for the season across both teams, which ain't bad. The Nordiques were so thrilled to have Tardif that they offered him an unprecedented 
10-year contract, a move that proved wise as the team's attendance increased by nearly 3,000 people after his arrival. In the 1975-76 season, during the height of the 1970s tough guy era, the Nordiques GM, Maurice Fillion, recognized the need for a group of enforcers to protect Mark Tardif and other Quebec skillful players. He reinforced the lineup with formidable fighters like Gordy Machine Gun Gallant, Kurt Brackenbury, Steve Sutherland, Alan Globensky, and Charles Constantin. The plan unfolded perfectly that season. The Nordiques tops the league in goals, secured the first spot in the Canadian division, and Mark Tardif solidified himself as the WHA's top player. Tardif led the league in goals with 71. He led the league in assists with 77. And he led the league in points with 148. This earned him the title of the league's most valuable player, an MVP. Even though everyone saw Tardif as the best left wing in hockey and invited him to play in the 1976 Canada Cup, he had a tough time against the Calgary Cowboys during this amazing season, like just the Cowboys. This is because the Cowboys were just a gritty team without many star players, and part of just didn't perform well against them in the season series. However, he didn't shy away from a challenge, and he had two fights with the tough guy, Rick Judzeal, and he gave a strong beating to Butch Deadmarsh. During the season, Judzeal was specifically instructed to closely follow up and disrupt Tardif, and this tactic really seemed to work. Building up to the events that follow, we turn to the account in the Rebel League from 04. In the playoffs of that year, the Nordiques were known for their exciting style of play, faced off against Cowboys in the first round. On paper, it seemed like a huge mismatch. The Cowboys had ended the regular season 18 points behind the Nordiques, and the series was expected to be an easy win for Quebec. Yet, Cowboys coach Joel Crozier had other plans. Before the first game, he brought Cowboys player Dzio, Dead Marsh, and Peter Driscoll to a boxing club where they posed for pictures while making provocative gestures. The Cowboys surprised everyone by winning the first game of the series 3-1. However, things really escalated in game two. Early in the game, Gordy Gallant blocked Jazio, resulting in both players getting five minute penalties. Cardiff seized the opportunity and scored while Jodzio was serving his penalty. Later in the first period, Cardiff was positioned along the boards in his own zone when Jodzio, coming off the Calgary bench, headed straight for the Nordique star. As described by Quebec goalie Richard Broder, not Martin Broder, he came later, uh, Jodzio got within 10 feet of Tardif, leaped and cross-checked the Nordique winger in the face. Tardif, without a helmet, fell backward, his head hitting the ice with a disturbing sound, rendering him immediately unconscious. Despite Tardif being defenseless and already knocked out, get this, Jodzio continued to ruthlessly punch him, causing blood to gush from Tardif's nose and mouth. Jodzio had a single focus, according to Broder. He quotes, when he jumped on Mark, I jumped on him, then someone jumped on me, and the riot started, end quote. The ensuring brawl went on for 45 minutes, and it only came to an end when the Quebec police stepped onto the ice, guiding both teams to their respective dressing rooms. 11 players were thrown out of the game, and referee Steve Dowling handed out 179 penalty minutes. In a bloodied and battered state, still unconscious, Tardif was carried off the ice on a stretcher and hurried to a nearby hospital. Maurice Fillion said, It was the worst thing I've ever seen in hockey. The big fight got everyone's attention, and what happened next was just as messy. The Cowboys, <laughs> who ended up winning, said the Nordiques were making up how hurt Tardif was and denied that Jodzio cross-checked him, even though there's video proof, but whatever, they're goons, <laughs> I guess. Anyways, Coach Crozier blames Quebec's coach for not controlling his team. 
the Nordiques got so mad they said they might just quit the series unless Dodzio got kicked out of hockey forever. Crozier, the Cowboys coach, got suspended for the rest of the series. Also, the commissioner of the league quit his job. <laughs> it was a crazy time in hockey. The doctors found out that Tardif had a serious brain injury, and it was really one of the first times they recognized a bad concussion. He couldn't play for the next four months, and he only started training again at the end of the summer. Sadly, Tardif also had to miss the 1976 Canada Cup. On the other side, Giorgio faced criminal charges, and admitted to assault. The CBC News said, quote, The Visitor General's office says the demand to lay charges will get special attention. The two teams cleared the benches to fight after Tardif was flattened by a high stick and punched several times while he lay helplessly on the ice, end quote. Tardif, who had an amazing season with 71 goals and 77 assists, was knocked out and taken to the hospital while the fight continued. The team said he wouldn't be playing for the rest of the playoffs against the Cowboys, who unfortunately ended up winning 8-4, taking a 2-0 lead in the best of semi-finals of the WHA's Canadian division. David Baza from the CBC News in Quebec City talks about how Tardif wasn't the same player after Jazio's attack. Baza mentions that it's been tough for the Tardif family, his friends, and himself. He asks Tardif if the mental pain is still there, since Tardif seems fine physically. Tardif says, yeah, physically I'm okay. But when you get hurt like that, you're not just gonna be as strong as before. It's like what happened to Ted Green. You just don't feel the same. Sometimes, even after just one or two beers, you feel more affected than you used to. Some things in the head are gone and won't come back. But the best thing to do is try to forget about it and just take it one day at a time. When Tardif made a comeback in the 1976-77 season, things were very hard for him. He had dizzy spells and migraines. He could only play 62 games, but he still managed to score 49 goals. Just an overall amazing player. Tardif helped the Nordiques win their first and only Avgo Cup championship in a tough seven-game series against the Winnipeg Jets. Somehow, this incredible stud of a man in the 1978-79 season once again, topped the league in goals with 65. He had the most assists with 89, and he had the most points of 154, setting a new all-time WHA point scoring title that was previously held by Phil Esposito. Mark played one more season in the WHA before Quebec joins the NHL. Mark, a fantastic skater, known for his excellent stick handling, ended his WHA career with an impressive 666 points in just 446 regular season games. When Tardif came back to the NHL in 1979, he was a bit older, but he was still a strong player for the new team. In the 79-80 season, he was doing really well and was on track for a 45 goal season again until he got hurt. Even with this injury, he still ended the season with 68 points in just 58 games. Incredible. As the 1980-81 season started, it was clear that Mark was just not the same star anymore. The Stasny brothers and Michael Goulet were starting to take the spotlight. Hardiff wasn't thrilled about it, but he kept on delivering. In the 81-82 season, he even scored 39 goals, his best NHL performance near spot in the 82 All-Star game. Mark finally ended his NHL career, and this will be his hockey career, in the 82-83 season. He found himself on the third line behind Michael Goulet and Anton Stasny, and tensions rose between Tardif and the head coach again, Michael Bergeron, due to Tardif's indifferent attitude and lackluster defensive play. Oh, isn't this just reminiscent of his time on the Canadians? Oh my gosh. Nevertheless, the next season, Tardif's number eight was retired. A big honor alongside JC Tremblay's number three. He was later inducted to the Quebec Sports Hall of Fame. Tardif's NHL timing may have been a bit off, 
possibly costing him a spot in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Despite breaking in with a strong Montreal team, he never really had a chance to play on the top line. Returning to the NHL at 30, he found himself behind Goulet and Stasny. Nevertheless, Tardif ended his career with two Stanley Cup titles, one Avco Cup trophy, and one Memorial Cup, making a strong case as the WHA's greatest player. He wrapped up his NHL career with 401 points and 517 regular season games. In his retirement, Tardif owned successful Toyota and Kia dealerships within Quebec, <laughs> sharing his time with his family, including children and grandchildren. Despite being retired for 40 years, Tardif's name doesn't often come up in Hockey Hall of Fame discussions. However, there's no time limit on like when a player can be inducted to the Hall of Fame, as evidenced by his former teammate, Roji Vacan, who was elected in 2016. Considering Tardif's status is arguably the best player in WHA history, don't you think his accomplishments make a strong case for Hall of Fame recognition? In my opinion, it does. Do you think Mark Tardif deserves a spot in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to this video for more, or you're a bander. Oh.